Uh, my name is Richard Hoadley. I am a professional poker player and coach for Pokar.com. Before poker, I used to be a trainee accountant. Um, I'd been doing it for like three years, I guess, out of, out of college. And it just wasn't the job for me. It wasn't the career I wanted to go down. I was playing more poker, or I was spending more time focusing on poker than my actual job. Falling asleep at the desk, um, I'd been known to do that at, on my lunch breaks. It was very clear that this wasn't the job that I wanted to go down, even if poker didn't work out. So I thought I was going to give poker a shot. I was making just as much money on the side. Yeah, I quit my job as a trainee accountant and then I became a full-time poker pro about eight, nine years ago. Uh, growing up, I used to play a lot of card games with my uh, grandparents and my mum as they, they lived pretty close to us. We used to play uh, brag, uh, canasta, draw poker. We never played Texas Hold'em, but that gave me the buzz and the love for card games. So I, I probably have to thank my grandparents for giving me the poker bug, uh, the card game bug, which is why I'm a professional poker player today. Obviously having supportive family is important for a poker player, but having a supportive partner is you know, also extremely important. You've got to have someone that understands poker, not necessarily, they don't have to understand um, the ins and outs of the game, but they have to understand that your, your working hours can, aren't always ideal. A big part of you know, a successful poker player is always going to be having a good partner by their side. So I'm lucky, very lucky to have uh, Maria. So apart from like food and, and drink, um, I'm quite interested in my politics, but I don't really want to go into that too much because I know that could divide everyone. Yeah, apart from that, I'm spending a lot of time with Maria, cooking for each other, just chilling, chilling with each other, going out for meals. She's you know, my best friend, so spending lots of time with her is always good fun. My first memorable score, it was before I was a professional, um, me and my friends, we used to play a nightly tournament on Betfred Poker, it was at the time and we always you know, obviously try and compete with each other. I think it was probably about 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. I can't remember exactly the amount of money, but I remember it being you know, a really memorable moment. It wasn't even a career, but it was you know, just more bragging rights over the friends. My biggest score um, is only $28,000. I say only because in the grand scheme of things for a poker player, it's not that much. There's people I've coached that have won 100,000, 200,000. So one day I believe that that score is going to come. But for now it's 28,000. It was in the mega deep on 888 when it used to be actually good because now the tournament size is it's a lot smaller these days. But yeah, at, at that time when I won, it was a great feeling. I couldn't sleep because I was so excited with all the adrenaline. When I first told my family that I would be quitting my job to become a poker player, it was obviously met with a mixed reaction. As parents, they wanted to support me, but they were also very worried that and thought I could be making a really big mistake. Once I started to win a little bit, my dad, you know, he was, he was very easy to like turn around and he started obviously be proud. But my mum, she was always proud, but she's always worried more. I think mums do that, mums worry a little bit more than dads. It's only until recently where I started to become a coach for poker and I had the guaranteed monthly income. Now she's, she has no worries at all regarding poker and she's you know, obviously happy that I'm doing pretty well. I joined poker I think about four years ago maybe a little bit longer. I wanted to join poker because I was looking to move up the levels. My game had got a little bit stale. I was probably just a very, very basic reg, as they would say. I wasn't doing as much study on my game. So I thought, you know, I need to look for a stable, try and get use their training sites and their coaches that they have there. And then within a year or so, I had worked my way to becoming a coach, just helping the, the, the newer guys out, give them the fundamentals. And then in the last two years, I've moved up the level in my coaching as well, and now I'm one of the main coaches. Having the opportunity to coach for poker has been a great experience. I think I've coached people from over 30 to 40 countries now, you know, ranging from Brazil to Russia, Canada, and even Azerbaijan. If I could give one piece of advice to up and coming poker players, it would be to work, like work your butt off really. It's got to be what you think about most during the day, when you go to sleep, uh, you've got to have the want and will to improve yourself day in, day out. Whether it's you know, using the solvers out there, self-analysis in your own game, in Poker Tracker, 
watching videos, you have to put the work in to really make it. There's obviously some exceptions where some people just turn up and win, but in general, it's got to be play a lot, study a lot and work a lot. Away from the poker tables, um, my main interest is probably uh, cooking. Um, I love to cook, bake, make cocktails, yeah, any, anything like that. Uh, I love to get friends over. It's hard to get everyone together these days with all leading busy lives, but when we do, I, yeah, I love to entertain, get a big buzz out of people enjoying my food. Interesting fact, I once got so close to getting on a TV show called The Great British Bake Off. I basically, in poker terms, I basically final table bubbled the show. I got from 16,000 applicants down to the final 50, and then from the 50 down to 12, I missed the final cut. So that was pretty brutal at the time, but I'm glad it happened because it really gave me the kick up the backside to really focus on my poker.